what you're looking at here is a shot of how this tank looked as of about a month ago. I've done a couple of these time-lapse videos and they've all been well received, but I now have the ability to narrate over the video and explain a little bit of what you're seeing, so I thought I'd give that a try. This video is split up into a few parts. First I'll show you 7 months of growth in 30 seconds. Then I'll play the video again but pause in the middle to explain what caused all of the corals to take a sudden downturn and then obnoxiously slow recovery right in the middle. And then I'll flip back and forth between a couple photos that are spaced a dis decent interval apart so you can see the growth even more clearly. The camera that captured the images for the time lapse video is mounted to the left side of the tank, it's physically bolted to the canopy, and takes photos a few times per day. It's important of course that it stays perfectly still. And now, on to seven months of growth in 30 seconds. Here that is again with the explanation of what happened in the middle. As you can see, everything was going great until right about this point. Suddenly my polyps were closed, my egg can looks like death, leathers were shedding every other day, and diatoms were rampant. Curiously, the SPS didn't seem to mind much, but my elk usage did take a serious hit, so I'm assuming that the growth was affected. I searched for a cause for about a week, with no avail, and then suddenly, out of the blue, I read an article about sunscreen and how toxic certain sunscreens are to coral. I had just bought a new sunscreen the week before this happened, and sure enough, it had a chemical that was so deadly that one drop per billion gallons of seawater was reported as being toxic. I checked my old sunscreen, and it happened to be the safe sink kind. Not that I knew it at the time I bought it, it's just that's the way it happened to work out. I started doing daily water changes. I ran things like carbon, GFO, just in case, you never know. And slowly but surely, the tank came back around. Now that you've seen the video, I'd like to show you this. These are two photos that are taken six months apart. Here we have January and July. Once again, January and July. And there are a couple of corals here I'd like to point out. Check out the two pavona up top here that I have highlighted. Back in January, they were tiny. But now here in July, they've grown quite a bit. Another couple of corals that grew well are these monies. You can see the digi up top there, the cap you don't even see in the January photo, and this digi down on the bottom right is just a just an encrustation in January. But here in July, you can see they've grown quite a lot. And the polyps and toadstool over here are no slouch either. These are some softies that have done quite well for me. Check out the polyps. They even have a Kenya tree in the middle now. In conclusion, I thought I'd share a couple of full tank shots from the time period of the time lapse. This one here is about January, this one's around March-ish, and this last one is in the middle of June. At the beginning of this time lapse, the tank had just transitioned from an SPS-dominated reef to more of a mixed reef. I did this partly for more movement, variety, and corals, but also to make the tank less sensitive and cut down on all the equipment and noise that comes along with a SPS-dominated reef. Partly just for fun, but also so as not to confuse somebody that looked up my YouTube channel and found my older time lapse, this is what the tank looked like about a year ago, just before the transition. Thanks for watching my video, and if you enjoyed it, be sure to comment. These videos take time to put together, and knowing people get something out of them gives me motivation to do it again in six months when I have more growth to share. <laughs>